<laughs> Pinky gasps for breath as she runs from the shadowy figure behind her. A pair of glowing red eyes stared deep into her soul as they pursued her in the dark. A determined laugh echoed around her as the figure creeps ever closer to the pink party pony. <laughs> oh, what's wrong, Pinky? Don't you want to play with me? No, no, go away. Pinky screamed at the figure that stayed just outside the f her field of vision. She didn't know why it was following her, and she didn't care. All she wanted was for it to stop. Stop the whispers that called to her every... Whenever she closed her eyes, the visions of her friends brutally murdered by the uh, an unknown pony. Whoever or whatever that scent was that was following her had been has been haunting her for weeks. Every time she closes her eyes or thinks that she is alone, the same demented voice echoed from the dark. <laughs> Aww. Too bad, because I want to play with you, Pinky. Every time, every second, single goddamn time, the voice always asks the same question. Do you want to play with me? The first time Pinky had heard it, she had thought it was just some little filly hiding in the shadows. But when she stepped close to it, her blood turned to ice. Ever since then, she had slept with the lights on, never entering a dimly lit room, or stayed out at night. But still, the voices follow her. <laughs> Pinky fell, falls to the ground, tumbling face first into the cobblestone street. Something hot runs down the side of her face as she groggily gets to her feet. She looks into the shadows. The glowing red eyes were still there stalking her, her heart mercilessly pounding against her chest, begging for the mare to stop but her fears overpower her. She scrambles to her feet and continues to run through the Empty streets. Aw, oh, did Pinky get a boo-boo? Here, let me make it all better. <laughs> the voice mocked Pinky. As it slowly gets closer to her, Pinky grits her teeth as she pleads with her burning legs to go faster. Though try as she might, she couldn't. If anything, she was getting slower. With every step, every heartbeat, her body, her body gets closer. With every step, with every heartbeat, her body gets harder to move. Her sight is slowly becoming blurred. It wouldn't be long before fatigue forced her to stop. A new wave of panic started to fill her. She darted her head, looking for something, anything that could help her escape. There was nothing. Nothing but the surrounding blackness that ensured, shrouded her torment. A faint flicker catches the corner of her eyes, and with it, a glimmer of hope. Light, yes. I only need to make it. To the light. Pinky runs with all her might towards the flickering light. The voice chuckling at it, as it watches her gallop towards the, her figure. Yes, Pinky, run, run towards the light. <laughs> it's your only hope. It increases its pace to a sprint. Tears run down Pinky's face as she feels its hot breath mere inches behind her tail. The light only a few feet away, away. The only thing between her. And it was a wooden door. Pinky lowers her head and slams into the door. It swings 
open, then quickly shuts behind her. She falls to her side, gasping for air. The cool, crisp air, like a thousand icy needles, penetrating her lungs. Her body spasms on the cold floor as she lays there. Once she catches her breath, she sits upright. As her vision begins, begins to clear, she can only see exactly where she was, was at. Her face contorts into a look of sheer horror as she realizes where she was. Carousel Boutique, the pla last place she was with her friends. Fragmented memories of that night poured into her. A stormy night, a shrouded pony rarity, screaming as the night knife plunges into her her throat. Ah! Pinky screams as she clutches her head, tears rolling down her cheeks as more images flashes before her. She has tried to forget that night, but being here only causes her to remember how her friends were killed. Why was she the only pony that survived? Why was she spared? When the investigators questioned her, she told them that she couldn't remember. The doctor said that it was defense mechanism of the brain to repress the horrific events. Now though, sitting where they were killed, her memories were starting to come back. But Make it stop! Pinky pleaded with her mind as more images flashed before her. Images of Applejack's mangled corpse laying next to a disembound Rainbow Dash. Fluttershy's head replaced by one of the mannequins. Spike being hacked up into little pieces. An image of Twilight's covered in stab wounds. <coughs> <coughs> Pinky puked as the images began to play over and over in her head, her body violently shaking as the fragmented images overwhelmed her. Then, just as suddenly as they stopped, Pinky lies there, petrified as tears billow from her bloodshot eyes. The lights above her begin to flicker, causing Long, twisted shadows to crawl over the floor. Oh, is Pinky feeling down in the dump? Poor little thing. I know just the thing to make you feel better. Let's have a party. No, go away. I don't want to play with you. What's wrong? I thought you liked having parties. Look, all your friends came. Come on, let's make see you smile. The shadow's figure begins to shift and swell as one by one. They take the forms of her dead friends. They crawl towards her, twisted smiles on their faces as they do. Come play with us. They sing as they slowly claw up her body. Stop! Pinky screams as the lights above her flickers back on display, the figure clutching to her body. Oh, in here I thought we were friends. The bestest friend any friend could ever have. Isn't that what you said? Please, please stop. Just stop. All those years together, we were so happy. Just you and me. Then you went and left me behind. Now look where you are. Once again. Alone in the dark. Around. To keep you, me at bay. We can pl be together again, Pinky. Just like old times. What do you say? For the last time, go away! Pinky, Pinky, Pinky. I could never go away, after all. 
The figure steps into the light, making Pinky's eyes go widen as she once again sees the all too familiar face staring at her. All I want to do is see you smile, smile, smile. No! Pinky bolted upright, throwing the covers off of her sweat covered body, her breathing sporadic and wheezing. She puts her hooves up to her face and begins to cry uncontrollably. She sits there for a several minutes, a pawn to her own emotions. When she can no longer cry, she gets out of bed, removes her sheets. She throws them in the hamper, making her way over to the closet. She passes by a collection of old pictures. Pictures of a blank flank pinky playing by herself, walking past them. Long forgotten memories rising to the surface. Memories of her playing with her imaginary friends. Ty, you're it. Pinky, try to catch me. You're my best friend. Forever, Pinky. Pinky, look. I found a baby bird, but the poor thing has a broken wing. Let's put it out of its memory. Pinky, you look so happy when you drown that cat. Let's go find another. Is that Daddy's straight razor? Let's go find something for you to kill! Wow! You finally got your, your cutie mark, Pinky! Oh, it's so pretty! Pinky, don't you want to play with me anymore? Pinky, please, don't leave me! Pinkie Pie, all I wanted to do was make you smile! Pinkie Pie, I will be back one day when you least expect it! Better stay happy, because when you falter, and believe me, it's inevitable, I will be there patiently waiting in the darkness, and you will be mine forever. Forever. Opening the door, an array of vibrant, colorful patches of skin welcomes her, each one depicting a different cutie mark. The voices of the pony's last moments rushing into her mind as she looks at each one. Her eyes fall upon the small shrine in the center, and a smile begins to curl on her face. A blood-stained knife and five distinct cutie marks proudly displayed. The screams of her friends once again ring in her ears. As her memories come back to life, a heated argument, her crying in, the cor in a corner that was too familiar, voices echoing in the deepest recents of her mind, the old familiar feeling of bloodlust washing over her, the knife in her front hoof, her friend's blood spilling over the floor, the feeling of the knife cutting deep into their cutie marks. Her lips peeled back into a broad, malicious smile as she picked up the knife, hiding it in her mane. She leaves her room. It was time to increase her collection.